Welcome to another deep dive into the world of AI. Today, we're going to be talking about some pretty cool advancements in vision language models, VLMs for short. VLMs. Yeah. You've probably heard me mention them before on the show. These are those fascinating AI systems that can you know, understand both images and text, like bridging that gap between seeing and reading, right? Yeah. It's like teaching a computer to see and then understand what it's reading all at the same time. Exactly. So speaking of exciting things, VLMs, we're going to be focusing on Siglip 2 today. Oh, yeah. Siglip 2. From Google DeepMind, you might remember Clip or the original Siglip. Right, right. Which were groundbreaking in their own way. Yeah. But Siglip 2 takes things a little bit further. It's like they took everything they learned and just like cranked it up. Like it's next level. So let's talk about what makes Siglip 2 so special. One of the key things is its training process. They've combined a whole bunch of powerful techniques to create a really robust model. One of those techniques is called decoder based pre training. Decoder based pre training. Yeah. What do you think about that one? Well, imagine you're teaching the models to write captions for images. Okay. That's essentially what decoder-based pre-training is. And by doing that, the model develops a deeper understanding of the relationship between like what it sees and the language associated with it. So it's not just recognizing an object of like understanding the context. Exactly. And that's just one part. Right. They've also incorporated something called self-distillation. Self-distillation. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, think of it as an apprentice learning from a master craftsman. Oh, so the model is getting extra tutoring from like a more experienced version of itself. Exactly. And that really helps it fine tune its understanding and improve its overall performance. Now, another technique they use that I find really fascinating is mask prediction. Oh, yeah. Mask prediction. It's a really cool one. It's like playing hide and seek with the AI. Exactly. It's like you cover up parts of an image and ask the model like, hey, what's missing? Right. And that forces it to pay attention to detail and learn like the patterns within the image. So it gets better and better at understanding those little nuances of visual information. Absolutely. And what's really impressive is that they apply these techniques in stages during the training. It's like a carefully orchestrated training program. You start with the basics and then gradually, you know, increase the complexity. That's a great way to put it. So, you know, the model isn't overwhelmed and can learn effectively. Now let's talk about something that really makes Sigil its multilingual capabilities. Oh yeah, this is huge. This is where it really shines. You see, most VLMs are primarily trained on English data, right? which kind of limits their use around the world, you know? Yeah, Siglip 2 is different. They trained it on his massive data set called WebL, WebL, which has images and text in a whopping 109 languages. 109, that's incredible. It's mind blowing. So it's not just about translating labels, it's about understanding visual concepts across different cultures and languages. So like imagine AI powered tools that can understand like medical images or analyze social media content from all over the world, even like help historians with ancient texts all in multiple languages. Exactly. That's the potential. And get this, it does all this with just one single model. Oh, wow. So it's not like separate models for each language. Nope, just one. And it can handle all 109 languages. That's thanks in part to the huge amount of data they use from this WebLI data. Billions of images and text snippets. That's amazing. And that data diversity is really key, right? For it to understand all those different visual perspectives. Absolutely. It's like they're giving the model a crash course in global visual understanding. I love that. So we've talked about the training process, the multilingual capabilities. What? Whoa, did someone just break the fourth wall? Let's hear it. Um, so what's the Sig Leap uh, 2 uh, differ from the previous one? And uh, what the techniques they take to improve the result? Great question. The key difference with Siglip 2 is that it incorporates multiple techniques into one unified model. Okay, let's unpack this. So the original Siglip was already good, but Siglip 2 adds captioning-based pre-training. Right, that locket technique we mentioned where it learns to describe images. Exactly. It also throws in supervised losses. Like the self-dispilation where it learns from a master version of itself. That's the one. And active data creation. Which we haven't touched on yet, where it's trained on a super concentrated selection of useful data. Right. It's called ACID. Oh, okay. So by combining all those things, they get better results across the board. And that's what sets it apart. Exactly. Okay, great question. Yeah. So we've talked about the training process, the multilingual capability. Oh, yeah. That's huge. That's right. That's amazing. It's like the potential is huge for all these different fields. It is. And honestly, we've just scratched the surface. Yeah. There's a lot more to unpack here. Definitely. Welcome back to our deep dive into Siglip 2. Last time we were talking about how much detail it can extract from images, like where a car is in a picture or what kinds. Yeah, that spatial awareness is pretty impressive.
But there's this other aspect we haven't touched on yet. It's got this variant called Naflex. Oh, Naflex. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Naflex is designed to handle images of different sizes, you know, different resolutions. Right. And it keeps the original aspect ratio, which is really important for things like, you know, document understanding. Okay. And OCR. OCR. Optical character recognition. Oh. So like when computers try to read text from pictures. Exactly. So like think about digitizing old books, you know, Right. or analyzing historical documents. OK, yeah. Even things like automating data entry from paper forms. Oh, OK, I see. That's all OCR. So how does Netflix like help with that? Well, traditional OCR systems, they can have trouble when the images are like distorted or, you know, stretched to fit a certain size. Yeah. They might miss characters or like read the text wrong. I see. But Naflex, it keeps that original aspect ratio. Okay. So it can handle all those weird layouts and resolutions without losing accuracy. So it's like making sure the computer sees the document exactly as it is. Yeah, exactly. No warping or distortion. That's pretty smart. And it can do all this from like a single model. Oh, really? Yeah. So you don't need like separate models for different image sizes, which makes it much more efficient. That makes sense. So Netflix is kind of like a multitasking expert when it comes to document analysis. It is. And it's a huge help for people who work with tons of documents, researchers, archivists, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, you mentioned earlier those smaller Siglip 2 models. Oh, yeah. The VTB16 and VATD32. Yeah. What are those all about? So those are all about efficiency. Okay. They're designed to work really well, even when you don't have a lot of computing power. Oh, I see. Like for mobile devices. Exactly. Things like that. Okay. One of the ways they do this is through a technique called distillation via active data curation. Distillation via active data curation. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Basically, they're trained on a super concentrated selection of the most useful data. It's like giving them a cheat sheet for understanding visuals. Exactly. And even though they're smaller, they still perform amazingly well. They've been like carefully optimized to make the most of what they've got. Now let's talk about the training process for Siglip 2. Okay, yeah. We touched on it before, but I was hoping we could dig a little deeper. Sure. So remember those computationally heavy techniques we talked about? Yeah, like self-distillation and mask prediction. Yeah, those, well, they don't just throw all those in at once. They use a staged training approach. So it's a, like a step-by-step -step process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It starts with like the simpler tasks, you know? Right. And then gradually adds in the more challenging stuff. Okay, I see. And that's important because it helps manage the like the computational load, right. right? Makes sense. And it also ensures that the model actually learns effectively. So it's like building a house brick by brick. Exactly. And this approach really pays off because Siglet 2, it performs incredibly well. Like it achieves state of the art results without needing a crazy amount of processing power. So powerful but also practical exactly and that practicality you know it makes it more accessible for researchers who might not have access to those like massive computer systems right yeah speaking of accessibility i'm really impressed with how much they focused on making oh yeah uh -huh. uh, can we uh, talk about the data set that siglip use and uh, highly special I hear you. So what can we do to broaden access? Good question. Well, one thing is that the creators of Siglip 2 released the model. Yeah, it's open source, right? Exactly. So that means researchers, developers, anyone can use it, modify it. That's really cool. It's like democratizing AI. Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. Hey, I mean, uh, the, what's the special of this Siglip used for the data sites? Okay, so you're asking what makes Siglip 2 special for their sites? A key feature is its ability to work across multiple languages. Oh, yeah. It's like it's fluent in so many languages, like we said. Right. So Google can use it for search, translation. And so many users around the world get better results. Plus, it's really good at understanding images. So it can improve image search, content moderation. Exactly. And it is backwards compatible. We touched on it before, but what does that mean? Uh, yep. Go on. Ah, uh, yes. You're asking about the data sets they used to train it. Okay, let's unpack this. So they primarily used Webule, right. as well as other multilingual data. Which has images and text in a whopping 109 languages. 109? That's incredible. What stands out to you about that? They also incorporate techniques from that debiasing paper. Oh, yeah? Yep. That's a great point. Yeah. Now, where were we? We were about to talk about the data. The data. Well, they used this massive data set called WebEye. Which has images and text in a whopping 109 languages. 109, that's incredible. Siglip 2 is fluent in so many languages. Yeah. 
It's a true global citizen. And it's not just the languages. It gets top scores in image classification, text generation. So it's safe to say Siglip 2 is like a front runner. It's mind blowing. How do they ensure that the data is actually good? Well, they use filtering techniques to get rid of biases. So the model isn't learning any like harmful stereotypes. So how do they do that? Absolutely. It can understand visual concepts across different cultures. Absolutely. So what are some of the potential applications for Siglip 2? Oh, the possibilities are endless. Like what? Well, think about things like self-driving cars. Okay. They need to be able to understand what's around them. Definitely. Or medical imaging, right. where even the smallest detail can be crucial. Exactly. And then there's things like helping people with visual impairments. Oh, yeah. Cichlet 2 could help them understand the world around them. That's amazing. And it can also be used for things like content moderation. How so? Well, it can help identify harmful content online. Oh, I see. And it can also be used for things like education. How so? Well, it can help students learn about different cultures. That's true. By showing them images and videos from all over the world. Wow. So as you can see, the potential applications for Siglip 2 are vast. Absolutely. So who are the people behind Siglip 2? Oh, yeah. We should definitely give them credit. I agree. Well, there's a whole team of researchers at Google DeepMind right. who have been working on this project. Yeah, it's a huge team effort, right? It is. But some of the key people involved are like... Shama Zai okay. and Alexander Kolesnikov. Got it. And Lucas Beyer. Okay, cool. And they've all made significant contributions to the project. Definitely. So what's next for Siglip 2? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Well, the researchers are continuing to work on improving the model. Okay. And they're also exploring new applications for it. That's awesome. So we can expect to see even more exciting developments in the future. Definitely. So any final thoughts on Siglip 2? Well, I think it's a really impressive achievement. I agree. And it has the potential to really change the world. Absolutely. It's a huge step forward for AI. It is. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds. Me too. I'm really excited to see how it evolves. Yeah. So it sounds like we are just about out of time. This has been a fascinating look at Siglip 2 and its potential. Definitely. I hope you found it as interesting as we did. Yeah, it is a good topic. We hope you can join us next time for another dive. Until then, keep exploring. Keep learning. And keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And thanks for joining us today. Yes, thank you. We appreciate your questions and insights. Yeah. And